Hey there guys, welcome back to the Solo YouTube channel. David Beebe here with Tom Quayle in person for another joint practice session with the Solo app that we developed together. Every week on this channel, we do free video lessons showing you how to get the most out of the app. So if you're interested in that sort of things, just subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we post new videos. In today's video, it's very important that you are using an audio interface. So you need a practice partner for this and then you both need to be plugged into an audio interface with a copy of Solo. Um, we've talked on the channel many times about what interfaces to use. One of the ones that we love and recommend is the, uh, the X-Tone Smart Stomp uh, from X-Sonic. And this is, gives great results with either your iOS or your Android device. So Tom, do you want to introduce the uh, concept of what we're doing in today's lesson? Yeah, so in the previous lesson we talked about, we, we were talking about somebody being an accompaniment partner and you weren't, if you were the accompanist, you weren't actually plugged into solo. But actually when musicians uh, improvise and when they play together, music is like a conversation. It's not just one person with one role, say the accompanist, and the other one is the soloist. It can be much more interactive and much more conversational. And actually one of the ways that jazz musicians in particular, but this can be any genre, it could be blues or you know anything where there's instrumentalists playing together, um, or even vocalists, of course. One of the things that people do is they will play single line or single note monophonic lines together so that when you play those monophonic lines together as different instruments, they combine into a bigger whole, which would be, uh, if you're playing chord tones, for example, you will be outlining the sound of those chords by playing multiple chord tones stacked on top of each other. Now, if you're two guitar players like we are, what you can do is you can use solo to practice this skill in a very, very specific way, because this skill is hugely uh, interlocked, if you like, with your fretboard knowledge. You have to know your fretboard really well to do this. So one of you might be playing, say, on a particular chord, a line that goes root, third, fifth, seventh, as an ascending kind of line, while the other musician might be playing, let's say, descending. They might be going three, and then the root, then the seven, and then the one coming down. Now the combination of those two things together, those two monophonic lines, will give you this kind of polyphonic or, or two notes sounding together, and you'll have covered all the notes in the chord, so you'll have this beautiful lush sounding line that's almost classical in nature. It gives you a kind of Bach-like sound. Um, I kind of call it Bach jazz. It's kind of yeah. like poor man's Bach, basically. Um, so you end up with this very, very cool sound. It's quite difficult to achieve at first, but solo is an amazing practice tool for this. But as, as David said, you must have two copies of solo. Now, this is not some weird kind of marketing <laughs> scam on our part. Be good. The reason you need two copies of solo is for two, for two reasons, actually. The inputs of your guitars have to be isolated from one another because if they're not, and Solo is listening to what's happening in the room as we're playing together, it's gonna to get confused because it's gonna be hearing two disparate notes or two different notes at the same time. So it's got no idea whether it's supposed to be listening to one or the other of those notes. What we've done here is I'm running into this, uh, an iPhone here. Uh, this is an iPhone 12, I believe? Uh, 11. 11. 11, yeah. Okay, it's an iPhone 11. And I'm running via a quad cortex from Neural DSP straight into here. BB's plugged in via an FM3, a Fractal Audio FM3 but it could be any audio interface. Now, the X-Tone's great because it's nice and small and compact, so you know you don't need to carry that much stuff around. Don't feel like you both need to have like massive audio interfaces to do this with. It doesn't need to be something big. It can still be a very portable um, device that you can carry around. So if you're practicing in the practice room of a college or some kind of conservatoire, or you're traveling to your friend's house to practice, you don't need a big rig to do this. So essentially, our inputs are totally isolated. Now the way we're gonna set this up is we're gonna agree on a tune to practice, mm -hmm. a particular set of chord changes. The reason for that is not so that we can learn the tune together, the reason is so that we're working on the same harmonic material together. This is super important. You can't do this with different tunes. And the same level as well. The same level. For, the, for this to work. Absolutely. Um, and I, if any of you guys have watched a lot of Tom and Martin Miller's uh, duo work that you've done, this is the kind of sound that you guys have done on your mm -hmm. tools and things. And you know we've done it tons in terms yep. of when we jam practice and stuff. And yep. it's, uh, it's a really satisfying um, creative kind of, as you say, like a bit of a conversation that can come out. And um, 
to get to that point could be quite sort of tricky. And I think what we've done here with Solo is certainly a sort of like a, a logical kind of stepping stone, I think, to learning the skills of how to achieve that kind of interactive um, dual soloing kind of um, yeah. sound. Well, this is why I call it conversational. So before we set it up, the reason why this is satisfying is because it's much more conversational and you can hear the chords being outlined in real time. But when you get good at this, you can start to react to what the other person's playing. But of course, until you know where this stuff is on the fretboard, until you can hear it in context, it's very difficult to do this. Mm. So with Solo being a tool or a device, as a practice tool, that doesn't rely on time, there's no metronome clicking in the background, you guys can work at a similar pace without the pressure of being forced into playing the next note by time. Now you can agree on a tempo if you like, and you could have a metronome clicking in the background. We're not gonna do that. We're just gonna have this kind of uh, like nodding or some kind of agreement as to what our kind of speed is going to be, but we're going to have some kind of ebb and flow to this. It's not going to be yeah. metronomic in it, in its time frame. Not in the practicing with the, no. the, the solo exercises. And the other thing here to bear in mind, of course, is the practice partner that you're with, you'll want to work at the speed of, uh, it kind of sounds obvious, but you've got to, as you said, that ebb and flow will be dependent upon the kind of um, the level of the, I don't want to say like the weak is, no, that's, but, but that's the, what it is though. Um, but it's the person that's, you know, kind of um, on the you know the lower fretboard knowledge, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So stay in kind of like communication with each yeah. other. Don't just stare at the screen. There's no problem when you're doing this in slowing right down and making sure that you're synchronized. Yeah. And, you know, it's you're, what you're doing essentially is you're practicing this skill out of time, out of context, and making sure that you are both getting through the changes that Solo is asking you to apply. So to set this up, hmm. let's do let's do all the things you are, because that's yep. a very nice tune for this. Again, the tune that you pick is entirely up to you. It could be one of the exercises, so long as you pick the same thing. So I've already got all the things you are selected. What we're gonna do to start with is work really, really simple and then build up to this, okay? So I'm going to select the root note only. So when you come into Solo, you've got multiple different levels that give you different chord tones to play, different numbers of chord tones. Don't, if you're not familiar with this, start picking like root and, you know, more than one chord tone effectively. Because what we're trying to do here is build into this idea of hearing multiple chord tones being played together as, as two or three single note lines. I mean, if you've got more people, you could do this. You could have a solo <laughs> orchestra, which is a weird thing, but we shouldn't rename the app duo. Quartet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. We've got a whole uh, suite of... <laughs> so that, there's a video <laughs> that needs to happen there, actually. Um, so I'm going to select the root note, and all, all my job is going to be is to find the root note, and then we're going to, in time with each other, not yeah. not metronomically, but in time with each other, play these chord tones. So BB's going to pick either the root, the fifth, or the seventh. Which one he picks is entirely up to him. I'll go for the root note. Okay, well, if I pick the third. That's that's great. Yeah. The third is a good one to start with because it's going to give you the character of the chord, whether yeah. it's major or minor. So you're going to get more. If you pick the fifth, it's going to sound a little ambiguous. You do need to be able to do it, though. So, mm. you know, work on the fifth as well. So you can see when we both tap on here, we've both got F minor seven because these chord sequences are synchronized. Don't change the key. Don't be out of sync with each other in terms of the key. It's asking me to find the root and it's asking BB to find the relevant third that is mapped out, so in this case, the flat three. So we're gonna, I'm gonna nod him, I'm gonna direct us, we'll just do this together, like a, as I say, a conductor would conduct an orchestra, and we're gonna play these together. Okay, so we're not playing metronomically in time. So, let's keep going. So you can immediately hear, it's like it brings a smile to my face every time. There's something deeply satisfying about creating harmony. This is gonna sound really cheesy, <laughs> but creating harmony with another human being. <laughs> Musical harmony. Yeah. Uh, because the experience of hearing the chord being represented 
not only by the note that you're playing, but by the note that someone else is playing, is really, really, really rewa uh, rewarding, if I can put my teeth back in. Yeah. Now, this becomes exponentially more rewarding as you start to play lines. But of course, what you want to do at first, by lines, I mean multiple notes for the same chord. So if you were going to play over this A minor 7, something like, oh, sorry, not that. An arpeggio or some kind of line, some kind of melody. What we'll do now is, if you were working on this yourself, you would now go in, maybe we can do this as well actually, so let's go in and I'll now select third and you do the fifth maybe. Yeah. Now with no root notes, this could become a little bit, a little bit more ambiguous, but say for instance, you there's three of you working on this and one of you is a bass player. Assign the root note to the bass player or assign any of the other notes to the bass player and then you've got some kind of lower end, kind of um, fundamental for the chord to sit underneath. And this is going to work really well now because, of course, a bass player can DI via an audio interface as well. And you could have three of you doing this. It could get idea. really, yeah. really <laughs> interactive and a lot of fun. So <clears throat> let's take um, this with the third and the fifth for all the things you are now. So again, you'll see we're synchronized in terms of the chord here, but BB's got the fifth and it will map out the relevant fifth, so there's a flat five or a sharp five if is necessary. And I've got the third. <laughs> It's beautiful, it's really, really, really nice. It's a lovely way to have an interactive kind of musical experience with somebody else mm. that's not just based on me thumping around some chords while BB's soloing or whatever. So now we can move into the realms of having multiple chord tones. Now, if you're not used to doing this, this becomes exponentially more difficult. It's a very tricky thing to do, but of course, the more you you know do this, it's like everything else with solo. The visualization process mm. will increase uh, in terms of speed. But I think the other thing that's really useful for this, and you'll, I'm sure you would say the same thing, is the oral side of it. I was just literally about to say the same thing. Yeah, yeah. It's the, the ear training aspect of this is that you're, um, obviously one of the things at the moment in solo within the current form is the context that we've talked about has to be supplied externally. Um, and that is what's happening here. But not only is it's the two of you practicing the same exercise that's resulting in this context that's gonna be, do great things for your ears. Um, so you're hearing the harmony, you're hearing the chords out of these two singular lines that are being played. It's you know, musically satisfying and it's good for your ears as well. Uh, it's also actually really good for your confidence level when you're improvising as well Super, because yeah. you're hearing these things in a context and it feels good when you play them as well. My com yeah, on that note, yeah, my confidence in terms of doing this just went up through the roof. We're also, um, in terms of being able to keep track of where I am on the fretboard, keep track of where I am in a chart or within a form of something. Um, and I know we're not working necessarily to form with bars and beats and time here, but there is still an element of having to do multiple things at once. Yeah. And um, as we've always talked about with solo, it's it's kind of doing some of the heavy lifting, it's holding your hand, but it's not doing the work for you. So um, it, uh, this is why I think this is a really nice sort of on smooth on-ramp to this kind of, um, what did you call it? This uh, musical skill of um, this polyphonic or mm -hmm. dual soloing and um, this musical conversation thing. Yeah, so the next step in terms of the practice method would be we could come in and select two chord tones. Now, solo is quite flexible with this because it allows you not just to select the root and another chord tone, which is what I'm actually going to do. I'm going to select root and third, but you can select third and fifth and third and seventh as well. Um, so you've got the option there of omitting the root from the particular um, intervallic functions that you, you might be asked to play, which is quite useful. Third and seventh in particular is a really useful combination to have. What I'm actually going to do, why don't you do third and seventh and I'll do root and fifth. Mm -hmm. That might work really well. Now at this stage, now we've got two intervallic functions, make sure that you're not randomizing at this stage yet because you could come in at this point and randomize the order, in my case, the root and fifth, and in Bibi's case, the third mm. and the seventh. So it might go fifth, then root, or root, then fifth, and in his case, third, seventh, then seventh, then third. You should do that afterwards, and we probably will do that afterwards, but we'll wait till we get to four chord tones to randomize things. Um, but, you know, it's just because it's a step, more difficulty, if you like. Mm. So now, if we turn, go into the changes trainer here, 
start the workout. Again, obviously you can see I've got root fifth, Booby's got third and seventh. <clears throat> the really nice thing here is by the time we've played both of our chord tones, our intervallic functions will have represented the entire four note chord, but we'll have only played two notes each, which is quite nice. So, Um, so that's the idea. So you can hear again, it's very satisfying, really, really nice. We were slightly metronome there because we're quite sort of, you know, this is relatively straightforward for us at this point, or pretty straightforward. Obviously what we could do now, we've got two options. We can either randomize this, which would be very nice to do. So just to show you that really quickly, let's randomize it. Whoops. You can do this at any point where you've got more than one chord tone. So you just hit the randomization button. Now it's going to randomize the order of these two chord tones. So let's just really quickly go through that. Yeah. I'll direct a little bit quicker this time. Yeah. You get the idea. Okay, so that's quite nice because it's randomizing, it adds an extra level of difficulty. And then I guess we do four chord tones. Yeah, yeah. Or three, you could do three yeah. chord tones, you know, whatever they're, you want to they're do. They're in there in the levels. With the, you goes, it gradually goes up from uh, single chord tones, two chord tones, three chord tones. Um, and then this is the one, I think the four chord tones is where I've spent quite a lot of time. And I think it's a very useful section because as Tom said earlier, when you've got four chord tones, it's pretty much spelling out the, you know, the, the full harmony of what the chord's trying to convey. Um, and you're getting this kind of uh, good mapping and workout across the fretboard with it as well. So um, if we do this, should we do the root three, five, seven? Yeah, yeah. And um, um, if yeah. You, so if you have root three, five, seven, rather than randomize it at first, I'm gonna do fifth, seventh, root third. Sorry, yeah, root third. Okay, yeah, that's a good idea. This, this is obviously is gonna be preset structure, so we're gonna be you know moving through this structure. The, then you can start to randomize things and then it gets much more tricky. So we'll just do these two different things. Um, and again, here it's really important to work at a slow speed. This is not about mm. powering through this stuff at all. That's a really good point actually, because we are working through here in the demonstration of this lesson, something that you might do with your practice partner over a much longer period of time. Um, now, I, I guess the urge is always just to get to the, to the juicy section um but yeah like with everything when we stress for practicing this working the speed of your brain you know the trying to work on the hard things that you want to go at a period um that is going to gradually increase this not just like whiz through all levels and solo in, in one sitting just a real quick thing as well if one of you makes a mistake which is going to happen yeah. Solo will just wait for you so just communicate to your partner yeah. that you're practicing with okay well i've made a mistake that you'll when you get good at this, you'll be able to hear it, that you've made a mistake, and yeah. one of you will flag it up, obviously the person who's made a mistake. It's a good oral exercise as well, mm -hmm. just to notice if somebody's yeah. made a mistake. At that point, obviously just get back in sync again, and the way to do that is to, is to let the person who made the mistake find the correct intervallic function, and you're, if you, if you, you know, were ahead of them, Solo will wait for them to catch up, and then you can just start and come back in again. This is why it's really important to not do this metronomically. It just puts too much pressure on it. It's not fun anymore. And the other person, you're going to get really out of sync with each other at certain points. Mm. Okay, so we're doing four chord tones here. Root, third, fifth, seventh, third, fifth, uh, root. No, third, what seventh, choosing? root, third. What is it? Fifth, seventh, root, third. I Five, seven, even... one, three. Oh my word, what's going on? <laughs> that root in the middle. Yeah, bizarre, right. Okay. 
Okay, so I'll direct again, so. That's the idea, okay? Now, things take on a slightly more difficult nature when we select root, third, fifth, seventh. You must select that level. Yeah, that's it. Not any of the other variations. <laughs> so we're both selecting the same level now. And this is the cool thing, is that if we both hit randomize, yeah. the chances are that most of these are gonna be proven wrong now, aren't we? But, well, but most probably, of these will but... randomize a different set selection of one, three, five, seven, as each chord changes. It actually doesn't matter because if you do this, we, we will demonstrate this, um, you'll have heard some at the beginning of the video, but at, at the end of, you know, we, when we've gone through all this process, we'll demonstrate it. There is a surprising number of times where you will just ah, play the same thing yeah. when you're doing this, when you're actually improvising and you're not playing what solos told you to play. You will find it's quite common for you to play very similar things, if not the same thing as each other. Mm. So uh, it doesn't matter if it, creates the same same line. So when we hit start changes work out now, there we go. So it's created two different versions of the changes here for us to play all the intervallic functions. So this should sound really, really nice. So let's start down in this register yes. so that we're roughly in the same register. After that, go where you like, but maybe for the sake of harmonic interest, well, you know, clarity, let's start in yeah. sort of a similar register here. Well, you can mitigate slightly some of those kind of joint unisons if you were in different positions. Yeah. So, to, uh, And in fact, sometimes that's what you do in, um, is that when we're actually having this conversation, um, you, when you're listening to the other person, um, if they are down here on the of the low strings, it's unlikely I'm going to be doing that at the yeah, same time absolutely. as well. You'd so be I'm listening, like, wouldn't you? To, yeah, there's something somewhere. contrasting yeah. that would be, you know, harmonizing still, but in a different area of the, the register. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So you can mitigate it like that. But yeah, we, if we stay sort of first, roughly in the same yeah. region, yeah. Okay. So again, I will direct these in. I didn't play the right one. <laughs> so that's a perfect okay. example of, yeah. you know, just waiting. Yeah. I got for, one wrong there. Yeah. It, you know, oh, what's happened? Yeah, I didn't get it right. And but you can I was, see we've got back in sync here because solo, yeah. I, it, waiting for, for, for BB to play the correct note, mine's not going to move on at this point. Let's just do a couple more chords. Yeah. Okay. stop on this G7. So what we've ended up here is with the chord being represented in this linear fashion with two different kind of guitar, you know, lines if you like. So at this point, when you can get very good at doing this, you should be somewhere within the region where you can start to do this in real time without solo. And the whole point of solo is that at some point you don't need it anymore. It's not going to, you don't need it to generate the lines because you can do it for you or you can do it yourself if you like. So why don't we now demonstrate this principle, again, you've heard it at the beginning of the video, but this principle of the conversational nature of playing lines on the guitar to outline chord changes with one another. One, two, one, two, three, four.
Okay, guys, well, that wraps up another joint practice session video lesson for the Solo YouTube channel. I hope you've got a lot out of that. I hope you've enjoyed it, and it's given you some things to work on with your practice partner to kind of get to onto this um, sort of smooth on ramp onto this way of having a musical conversation with who you're practicing with. Um, there are, as we said before, a few other steps that have got to come before you get to the kind of level that where Tom and I are going at that um, in a more of a free way with time. But I think all of these things are great skills to be working on for many other reasons as well. So mm. it's definitely something to you want to work on. If you've enjoyed the video, then do subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we post new content. If you don't have Solo yet, it's available for the iOS App Store and in the Google Play Store for Android devices. Links are in the description below. Every week on the channel, we do new videos and uh, new lesson content. So check back next week and there'll be another one, probably another one with Tom and I in person doing a joint practice session. So until then, bye-bye. See you later, guys.